you guys can't see, come closer. This is uh, Baja Kambachi. This is a whole fish. How many uh, people here are familiar with Kambachi? This is Almaco Jack. This is a species native throughout the region, usually a little further south. We're in the Sea of Cortez in La Paz. We raise these fish from eggs. This fish is a year and a half old. We've caught 50 fish from the wild, and we've produced now almost 500,000 of these fish. We sell these fish direct to restaurants who care about sustainability, who want a fish that is quantifiably super low in mercury, 0 0.04 parts per million, fed essentially an organic diet from day one, not putting pressure on the wild stock to feed these fish or to catch these fish, and knowing for sure that they're not eating plastics, they're not getting uh, antibiotics or hormones. This is essentially a boutique quality, sustainably raised fish. So this is Baja Kambachi. We are here today because we want people to get an intimate association of what sustainable aquaculture can be. Not all farms are created equal. Um, I think it's important to support specific farms that are exercising certain farming practices and what we're doing is hopefully going to become more and more popular. We hope that this model of, of boutique sustainable open ocean aquaculture will be replicated in other parts around the world with other species. This fish works really well for us in the Sea of Cortez and we sell it throughout Southern California. Chef Cody here has been doing sushi for over 23 years. Um, he used to buy fish from us from, uh, at a restaurant on Abikini and he came down to the farm, swam with the fish, ate the fish feed, and is now drinking Kool-Aid with us. What we're doing is trying to shift the seafood supply chain. There's a lot of people who say, oh, overfishing is a problem, I just don't know what to do about it. There are really cool local fishermen that you can work with that fish in really clean, beautiful waters, but how do we scale this up? How do you scale up uh, the consumption of seafood in a sustainable manner? Well, I think in the same manner that we as humans learned how to develop agriculture on land, we learned how to grow tomatoes and beef and chicken on land, we learned that you can scale these sort of operations up either in an industrial manner that is perhaps like an industrial cattle farm that you probably wouldn't want to go within a couple miles of, or you'd have a pasture raised beautiful cattle farm where you'd want to have a picnic. The same is true, but we're just developing these technologies and these understandings in aquaculture. So our model of low density pens and clean feed is something that uh, hopefully will become more and more popular. It is relatively boutique, so again, the reason why we're here today is to not only show you these fish, let you taste these fish, ask, answer your questions, and get you familiar with the concept of specific farms matter. There are specific tomato farms and potato farms, like Weiser Farms, or Snake River Farms, or Mary's Chickens, and you support those specific farms because you know that their farming practices are ethical and biodynamic or organic, and the same thing happens in aquaculture. Not all farms are the same. Some farms received the sort of uh, financing that requires repaying their investors as quickly as possible and mitigating risk by giving them antibiotics. Others have patient capital investors who want to change the way in which the oceans are managed. They want to develop new understandings of how we can work symbiotically with nature. Multitrophic aquaculture is a concept you should all become familiar with. Has anybody heard that term before? Multitrophic? It means working with multiple species that synergistically work together. So fish eat feed and then they poop. And that poop is going to concentrate on the ground unless you have a lot of water distribution and or other species that actually eat that. So there's a lot of filter feeders, bivalves, that are really happy to clean the water and circulate that, and they work synergistically together. There are ways in which we can learn to symbiotically work with nature, and that's what we're trying to develop. We're trying to develop those sort of practices. So our farm has been harvesting these fish for a year and a half. We distribute them all over Southern California. Uh, if you come by our booth or come up here afterwards, I can uh, 
we can take down your email and direct you to some of the restaurants in the area that carry this fish. This is uh, this is something that we hope in the future you guys will go to your restaurants and request Baja Kampachi and request these sort of practices by other aquaculture farms. There's another beautiful farm he here aquacult uh, doing Pacific aquaculture doing the striped bass. There's very few farms operating with this these standards. In fact, within 1,500 miles, there's only two. There's ours and Pacific aquaculture. So we hope by being here today that people will uh, become familiar with Baja Campachi, understand that Almaco Jack or Cereola rivoliana is a species that is native to the area that can be sustainably farmed, that can be fed essentially an organic diet and can be brought direct to restaurants. The transparency of the seafood supply chain is something that will only happen if consumers demand it. You know, there's, there's a lot of visibility in where tomatoes and chickens come from and there needs to be more transparency as far as where your seafood comes from. So today Chef Cody took a whole fish he broke it down into into multiple loins. You can see here the color of this of the flesh, and you can see a bit of the bloodline there. This fish is uh, it's a sushi grade fish, meaning it came straight from the ocean in really clean conditions. It was kept cold the entire time, and it's ready to eat right now. So what he's going to do uh, after taking the sides off the bones and then breaking it down into quarter loins. He's simply gonna slice it into sashimi, rub it with some spices, some achiote spice, and then sear it with a blowtorch. So, um, yeah, we could, so Chef was suggesting that we just try it the way it is. So, uh, we're almost ready to have you guys come forward and try this, this product. I think it's really important uh, to, to taste this fish with the understanding that what you're tasting is the environment in which it was swimming, uh, the food in which it ate. So when you drink wine, you have terroir, a, a word that you guys are probably familiar with as an association of the minerals and the fungi and the environment in which that wine grew. And you taste that. The same thing is true with fish. It's with the environment in which this fish was swimming and the feed that it consumed. So we know for a fact that our fish were not eating plastic bags in the ocean. We know that they're not being in, uh, filled with antibiotics. It is a super clean feed. And what you're going to taste is La Paz. You're going to taste the crystal clear turquoise waters of the Bay of La Paz and the feed. So we use a feed that is made with the byproduct of a MSC certified sardine cannery. So at a sardine cannery, you have sardines that get turned into little loins uh, and packed into cans. Well, you take a sardine, you take those loins off. What's left over is the tailings, the head, the tail, the bones. And we work with them to take that byproduct, grind it up, and then combine it with algae, and that's their feed. So it doesn't need anything else. As long as they're in an environment where they're not gonna get ex concentrated and be in an unhealthy environment, you give them a good quality feed, and they'll essentially live out a natural, healthy lifestyle. So these fish are raised in that manner. We keep, uh, again, so we started again with uh, wild caught fish. Uh, we've caught about 50 of these fish from the wild. And uh, we keep them, a few of them at a time, about a dozen at a time, in a land-based pool where they mate. We give them the optimal conditions, the optimal lighting, uh, water temperature, the music that they like, and they get it on. Some of them like Al Green and they seem to do their thing. <laughs> We then take those fingerlings that are that are hatched and move them out to deep water open ocean pens. So one of the things that is that you need to ask when you're looking at aquaculture is what is the environment in which these fish were raised in? If you put a lot again, if you put a lot of living creatures in a small space, whether you're dealing with chickens or tomatoes or beef or fish, it's not healthy if you put too many of them close together. So we give them enough space and we give them a really clean quality feed, the feed that we talked about, the EWAS feed. So it's a byproduct of this, of a MSC certified uh, sardine cannery and the blue green algae. And that's really all it takes is clean feed, low density, clean water, clean feed. And then you end up with a clean fish. So that's what Baja Kombachi is today. When you guys come forward and taste this, um, I want you to realize that this is a fish. It has eyes, it has a life, and it and it is now being consumed by you. And 
I want you to appreciate that, and I want you to think about this fish now and its energy going into you. A lot of love, a lot of time, a lot of thought goes into this fish, and the flavors and the energy that you impart from this is now being transferred to you. So we say itadagimasu in Japanese to, to give thanks to the entire supply chain, the sunshine that created the energy, the people that were involved cleaning the pens, harvesting the fish, driving the, the fish up here, all of that encompassed itadagimasu. I hope that you guys take a moment to savor this fish and appreciate where it came from and think about the, the manner in which you, you know, request where your fish comes from. Um, look, uh, look for Baja Campache on menus. Again, we're selling throughout Southern California. I feel like Southern California is a place where there is a lot of uh, farm to table stories. People are supporting specific farms. We hope we're we're here today, hoping that you'll support Baja Campache and what we're doing, and uh, ask more questions. It is not enough, in my opinion, to say that all wild ca all wild caught fish is better than farmed fish. It's not enough to say that all farm fish is better than wild caught fish. It's important to ask who your fisherman is, when it was caught, how it was caught. It was important to ask where it was farmed, how it was farmed, what it was fed, what, what sort of densities. The more that you ask, the more that the restaurants, the more that the markets that you work with are going to inform themselves. Because as consumers, if you're not involved in knowing where your food comes from, large conglomerates are just going to industrialize the process. If you ask more questions, if you support local farmers markets and support uh, individual fishermen and, in, and individual farms like Omega Blue Baja Campachi or the Pacific Aquaculture Striped Bass, you're going to be supporting projects that are endeavoring to work with nature. And if you ask these questions and you work transparent work directly with individual farms, there's more transparency and your your dollar is actually going towards making a difference because this is a small operation and literally every follower on Instagram, every story, every email sign up makes a difference. So we really hope that you guys come check out what we're doing. Give us a follow on Instagram, it's omegablue.us. Um, thank Chef Cody for having amazing hair and just being here and being sexy. <laughs> And what he does with this fish is is celebrate the, the fish, celebrate the, the water in which this fish was swimming in, celebrate the quality of the feed that, that goes into this. I mean, there are farms in other parts of the world, uh, or even in, in North America, like some of the, not all, but some of the Atlantic salmon farms, they're kind of focusing on quantity as opposed to quality and what we're trying to do is focus on a boutique quality product and it's expensive and it relates to the quality of the feed, it relates to the flavors, it relates to the health and you know cheap is cheap for a reason, this is an expensive thing because it, there's a lot of value here. So when you eat this fish it's 0.04 parts per million which is almost undetectable according to a lot of uh, instruments. Uh, there's no plastics, no antibiotics, no hormones, no colors. Um, there's a couple of hands, so... What's that? Mercury. Mercury, yeah. So heavy metals is a concern, especially uh, amongst large pelagic fish, so like tuna. Uh, FDA has given guidelines on how often you should eat things like tuna because of, of heavy metals, especially for pregnant women, it's a concern. Because we mitigate the concentrations of mercury to begin with, mercury uh, concentrates in the flesh. And remember those sardines that we talked about? When you take the loins off, you're really taking most of the, 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 the mercury with it. And what's left over is what gets ground up and turned into the meal for this feed. So we've mitigated the concentration of mercury right from the beginning. And so this fish uh, falls under at such a low uh, detectable level that, that a lot of instruments don't even pick it up. So we have some questions. I'm going to run it right out here. By the way, these uh, young people that are giving you samples uh, are, are do junior docents. Give them a hand, please. That's so nice for them to do that. That was my first job ever, actually. I volunteered at an oh. aquarium once upon a time. <laughs> you know, docents are wonderful. It Volunteers really is, yeah. are the wonderful. Chula Vista Nature and Turban. Oh, yeah, I know yeah. Chula Vista. Yeah, that's, that was, that was my first uh, volunteer oh, job excellent. ever. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Good choice. Are there questions? Question right here. 
Is, is this the only fish you farm, or do you have it? Uh, With what? Is this the only fish you farm, or? At the moment, yeah. We do have some uh, grouper that are in the broodstock tanks, but uh, we haven't quite figured out what mu music they like yet. <laughs> you know, James, I was impressed that that fish that you showed us is a year and a half old. Is that yes. Did I get that right? Yes. From egg to that? Yes. They, the the growth rate on on Almaco Jack cereal Revelon is is quite rapid. A lot of jacks grow quickly. Um, that's part of the reason why we chose the species. The feed conversion ratio and how quickly they grow makes it financially viable and also more environmentally friendly. It doesn't require as much feed to get them to this size. So the feed conversion ratio, how much feed do you have to input in order to get fish to a certain size? With tuna, for example, um, the guys who are ranching bluefin tuna, the, the, the feed conversion ratio is the wet feed conversion ratio is about 15 to 1 where ours are about two to one, a little less. But that's an incredible growth rate, by the way. That's that's amazing. It's you can fish. almost watch that grow. Yeah, it's it's really a fish. We we sometimes sell baby kampachi to restaurants, uh, but they grow so rapidly that they're only available at like the specific specs for about a month. They're, they just grow very quickly, thankfully. And then we they have, slow down. When they slow down. They, they, as they, they get they, older, they yeah. bigger. Yeah. Yeah. We have time for a couple more questions. Is that a question, young man? Sure. How do you guys take off the eyeballs? <laughs> How do we take the eyeballs off? Um, generally, we just, we, the way that Chef is doing it today is he's focusing on, in, on eating the loins. That's what most people in America eat, but you can absolutely eat all of this. What we often do, uh, if anybody lives in Long Beach, is a restaurant called Row, and they'll take the heads and the backbones and they'll sell it at a farmer's market. And there's a lot of people who will make a caldo out of this. It turns out incredible. There's a lot of meat up in here. We really try to educate restaurants on how to use the whole fish. We sell whole fish because, one, it's important for people to have an understanding that your fish has eyes, it has a head, it had a life. Respect it. Appreciate it. And two, there's so much utilization. If you have a restaurant that wants to get a full yield on this, you can. It's just a matter of taking the effort to do it. There's, there's meat in all of these parts. The bones can be turned into a stock and a brew. There's, there's a, a fish, a bone broth of fish is actually something that is, I think, going to become more and more popular in the future as well. Okay. Um, yeah. And what Chef is doing right now, as far as as this uh, sashimi is concerned, is is allowing you to taste the fish in its naked form. We at our booth, we're doing an achote rub and seared with uh, a blowtorch and uh, a little bit of a uh, local prickly pear. And that's, it's a beautiful presentation, it's a beautiful color, it, the flavors are incredible. But it, what I hope that you guys try right here is to just get the naked essence of what this fish tastes like, what those waters taste like. Close your eyes and it really transports yourself, transports you to La Paz. What made you choose that fish over this species? Uh, this is a species that's local to uh, the Steve Cortez that grows quite rapidly and has a really good feed conversion ratio. So because its metabolism is such that it has a relatively low uh, blood pressure. So tuna, for example, a lot of people don't realize this, but tuna are warm-blooded creatures and they have really high blood pressure. So, that's, so in order to get them to uh, one pound, you have to give them 15 pounds of feed. Uh, whereas these fish, they are relatively docile, they're very, they, they reserve their energy. They, they will fight if they have to, but most of their life is lived relatively calm. And that's part of the reason why they put on weight very easily and uh, they don't require a lot of input in order to grow. So the, they're native to the species. We're not introducing a species from somewhere else. If any of these fish escape, it's literally, they're just hanging out with their cousins. It's not, not like a genetically modified creature in, in any way. So, great question. We're going to be uh, moving on to the next demo in just a moment, but before we do that, uh, help me in thanking Chef Cody and James in making our presentation today. And before they leave, and, and they're not leaving right now, uh, I see that we're getting some more food available, so our 
Young folks that are going to be helping are going to be bringing those around. If you want one, raise your hand, let us know, and they'll come around to give you a piece of fish. Um, some parting words, James, or Chef Cody. <laughs> parting words. This is Baja Campachi from La Paz. If you request it at your local restaurants, it makes a difference because there's hamachi and is, is probably one of the most pre uh, prevalent products that you see on menus and most of it's imported from Japan. It's much better to either work with a locally uh, line caught yellowtail or a sustainably farmed fish from Baja because one, it's not coming from thousands of miles away and two, transparency. Who is the fisherman and what are the practices? Not all the farms in Japan, but most of them are uh, practicing what's called ranching, where they catch wild caught fish and then they fatten them up and they put them in pens that require antibiotics. What we're doing here is shifting the idea of what can be done in the ocean. We're trying to develop a model that can be replicated in other parts of the world. If you can support specific farms like this that are using that are not using antibiotics that are that are doing low density open ocean pens and that are working with local native species you're hopefully supporting a transition in the sea supply chain because everybody knows that overfishing is a problem but what can you do about it if we're going to scale up uh, and continue to feed the, the world with seafood we need to start looking at alternatives. We've learned how to sustainably do biodynamic farms on land. We need to apply those same principles to the ocean now. So I appreciate you guys being here today. Sustainable seafood is not like a commonplace uh, concept for people to come out and support. So every one of you guys being here at the aquarium, I really appreciate the aquarium opening up and providing an educational platform. And uh, I hope that you guys look for us and follow us on Instagram. We do trips to our farm. Our farm is one of the most beautiful places in the world. There's whale sharks in the area. There's a beautiful marine protected area that's been one of the, uh, the hallmarks of what a marine protected area and, uh, can do as far as recreating a natural environment where live corals can exist, where scuba diving at this location is considered one of the preeminent areas in the world. So we're doing, we're doing trips to the farm where you can come down, visit the farm, swim with the fish, swim with whale sharks, visit marine protected areas. It's about promoting eco-tourism, sustainable fisheries, and smart aquaculture projects like this. So thank you guys for being here today. today. Hopefully you keep in touch. Thank you, James. Thank you, Mike.